how is the uh, Rossman Empire itself coming? No reason. Do, the only do, you, way... ever, do you ever tip your landlord, Lewis? I, I have a, you probably have more business experience than I do. What would you do if you were me? Right? I'm not a good enough business owner to be able to grow this into something like well, some 1,000 employee company. So I th you seem like a guy who has a lot of principles. Uh, am I right on that? I, so, I wouldn't want to compliment myself to that. Okay, well, principles okay. are bad in business, okay? You shouldn't, you shouldn't have those. I joined the Discord. You have to be like, oh. Huh. I guess he has perms. Yeah, I gave it to him. Me? Hello. What's Hi. up, Mr. Lewis? How are you? I feel like I've outpaced you. Super, how are you? I'm doing well. How's, uh, how's New York these, uh... These trying days. Love you. Oh, same as usual. Uh, a lot of a surprising number of stores closed, not because of any sort of government mandate or anything, but just because all of their employees got COVID and they had nobody left. I just went, I just went by my old neighborhood in the East Village on First Avenue around 14th Street, and there were two or three places that said, you know, closed due to Omicron staff shortage. You know, be back next week or so. So whatever happened uh, as a result of. Um, you had some dilemma that happened with like, I think the New York tax office or something like that, where you couldn't get a certificate or it was something to do like that. And you kept calling and they just told you no idea. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think this was. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to renew my license and it's always been kind of a pain in the ass, but this time it took about a year to get it. And I, I fully expected them to not actually give me the paperwork that was necessary. So I took a receipt that demonstrated that I did pay for this and I hung it in the window in the front next to my expired license. And then a full year later, I get something in the mail that says, if you don't have a license, you must shut down your business within 15 days. And uh, I wound up doing a video and I had a lady call me the next morning that it, it, it went from being like, I, I, hate, I really hate this part of it because I know that without YouTube, I would not have had somebody from the city calling me, talking to me like Hilton hotel staff. And they sorted everything out immediately. Oh, that's good. That was nice. But... So, how is the uh, Rossman Empire itself coming? Uh, the mail-in went up and the walk-in business kind of went off of a cliff. So I, I pretty much chose the worst possible time to move to a more centrally located, uh, you know, air part of, uh, of Manhattan. Because, like, the value of that is really kind of dropped off a cliff. But, you know, we're, we're still paddling along. Do you, so do you guys get enough walk-in business that makes up for the rent cost, or do you just at this point should be in the middle of fucking nowhere and have people mail you shit or what? Middle of nowhere for sure. Uh, yeah, because like the walk-in went down and the mail-in went up, so having a centrally located location really makes no sense. So I had to talk with the landlord about it, and I said, listen, you guys have offered me, you offered a great deal for the time. I'm not even going to ask you for a discount. That's just like being rude at this point. Um, I'm just, uh, you know, I don't mind if you show the space to other people. We're, I'm going to find something else because this just doesn't make sense for us. And then they wound up calling us back a few, you know, about a week later saying, oh, you know, we're willing to accept your offer. And I said, what are you talking about? I didn't offer you anything. And they said, well, no, no, no. Remember that part in the conversation where you said that, you know, I don't even want to offer you this because it would be insulting. And I'm like, yeah. And they go, yeah, that, I, we thought that was the offer. And I said, oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I'm, so I, we have a discount here until September of next year. But once September comes up, it's really like, is this going to be worth thirteen or $14,000? I don't think so. So, you know, one of the crazy fucking things with uh, Manhattan and New York right now. So my friend, um, he lives in a pretty big building. And it's actually, it's a co-op, meaning that all the people there like actually don't own their unit. They own shares in a company that owns the, the building. So they each have an apartment there. And then on the bottom floor, there is two commercial units. And one of the commercial units is a bar and it hasn't paid rent at all since the start of COVID is when they, when they completely stopped. And they told me that you just can't evict them at all. Like they're not even trying to pay. They're open. They're making money. Based. And there's nothing that any, you, there's an eviction moratorium. I didn't know this on commercial tenants. Did you have, that's fucking crazy. I know there is one for residential. I didn't know there was one for commercial. I wasn't aware of it. And I like, again, I think it would be rude if I just said, listen, I have the right to not pay anything like that would weigh on my conscience. Uh, like in the beginning, I wasn't paying them all that they asked for. Like, you know, the first month when it was totally dead before any A got released and nobody was walking in, I think I gave them like 
4500 or 6000 bucks instead of 12 or 13000 uh, but like as time went on you know when a bunch of people showed up i said okay here's 20k okay this month sucked here's 8k like you know um, but yeah there are there are people that are literally paying nothing because they know that they can get away with it um, and again if you if your business was completely closed and you had nobody there then i get it but if you have a bunch of people walking in, yeah, there are a lot of people that are taking advantage of the situation. I know somebody who I'm not going to say the name of on stream who is actually preferring to rent his apartments out to um, illegal immigrants because he does not want to deal with people who know the law well enough to know that if they rent his, his apartment that they could just get away with not paying rent for a year or two. Hmm. Like there's, there's all sorts of crazy stories like that. And there's a lot of people that are getting away with with, with murder and not paying. Like one example, uh, when it comes to this, any of the, the court system here. So I had an architect that did a horrible job. I did a video on it. It's like really, really, really bad work. They gave me bad advice that cost me money. And I said, listen, I'd like a refund. Here's why. And they said, okay, in writing, we will give you a refund. A month passed. They never made me, gave me a refund. So I went to a small claims court, like March of 2020. Uh, I didn't, you know, I got a notice in April saying we're going to be backed up for a few months due to COVID. Uh, well, you should hear from us in a few months. I didn't hear from them until August of 2021. I hear back from them in August of 21. They asked, "Okay, we're we're back in session. We're you know we're open again. Just write us a couple of you know just remind us about your case, and we'll get back to you in a week." And you know I I patiently await their reply. It's it's, it's 2022. So the, the the court system here was kind of a mess for a lot of stuff before COVID, but after it, I mean it's just ridiculous. Like I'm I'm lucky that that guy actually believed that that I could get money from commercial claims court. You know, I used that as a bluff to get him to actually pay me because I knew he wouldn't otherwise. Uh, I, I knew that I was never going to get a date in court, I, but he didn't. So I wound up, you know, getting a refund that way. But yeah, there are a lot of people that are taking advantage of the fact that landlords can't evict you right now. Yeah, it's a fucking terrible thing, honestly, uh, for the landlords. Yeah, because listen, I mean, like, I get it. There's a lot of anti-landlord sentiment. The rents here are very high and all of that stuff. Um, but, you know, at the, at, if that's the case, then at the very least, pay what you think you should pay. Pay what you think it's worth. When you pay nothing, when you give them zero, you're, you're making yourself look bad. You're making the people that actually are trying to be honest look bad. And you're making people that actually had financial strife you, you're, all look bad. And you're just creating senseless conflict for no reason. Do, the only do, you, way, ever, do you ever tip your landlord, Lewis? I, no, I've never in my life mm. tipped my land. That, I, a lot of people don't know that, but that's actually proper etiquette. So he's, he's, Dan is doing a stupid meme. Ignore like half of what he says. Okay, sorry. sorry. You know, I, I, may, I may consider it in an area where the, 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 it's not 65 or 66 bucks a square foot. Okay. But, uh, well, 65 dollars a square foot. I guess. Uh, yeah, that's a little. That's a little bit much. Um, this is the cheapest that you can get by. Like, I, it took me four months to find this place. And uh, the, one of the things that should have told me that this was the wrong time to move was that it was $66.66 a square foot. When I actually did the calculation, I took my little meter out, I measured all the rooms. It was $66.66 a square foot for this place. That should have been the sign, like, yo, something. I'm not a superstitious person, but, like, I rented it anyway, and, you know. Don't you have two places? You have, like, your main shop and then, like, a some like thing for receiving mail or something or what no i just have the, 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 this uh this shop i used to have two stores but that was a bad idea and i closed it in 2013. so lewis what are you doing what do you, like is this i know nothing about this business but is the is the is the repair shop is that a profitable endeavor for you are you like i'm glad i'm doing this because otherwise i don't know why you're not just going full on youtube and skipping that bullshit or selling the business it's a profitable endeavor and I, I, I enjoy what I do, and I also know that if I were to sell this or this were to become a CPR or a you break, I fix, they're going to come in here. They're going to take every employee here and tell them, okay, we're paying you 14 to 17 bucks an hour or whatever. Um, it's not going to be the same business at all, and I probably would feel like a – I feel like I'd feel like a cuck if I wound up selling this business to somebody who's going to treat it like shit. Like, I'm proud of this place. I'm proud of them. Because, uh, honestly, I'm at a point where I do not need to be in New York City anymore. The reason I'm here is because, like, I have certain employees here that have bought houses here. There's one employee who has a sick uh, father-in-law, so he wouldn't be able to move immediately. And, like, it's really, really tempting to just take it and go somewhere else. But, like, there's people here that have, like, helped me build this to what it is. And I don't want to, like, I, I wouldn't, I'd feel weird just, like, ripping them out immediately. It is profitable. But the other thing is I don't really... Like there's not, it's not like there's people that are just coming along and saying, I want to buy this business from you for three or $10 million. 
Because if somebody came along and said, I'll give you $10, $10 million for this, you know, okay, I'd, I'd be sitting, I'd have something to think about. But I really, I haven't gotten anything like that. Uh, it, 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 it is profitable, and it does run without me here. Like, I, I took a trip to, you know, New Hampshire just for two weeks to decompress with my girlfriend earlier in the year. And I came back, and, like, everything was still running just fine because I have great management and great employees. So, like, it really doesn't take much input from me for things to actually get done. All I need to do is, you know, like, look through things from time to time just to make sure that people are doing what they're supposed to. But, you know, it really runs itself. Do you have, like, a good manager there when you're not there, I hope? Yeah, he, yeah he's amazing. Well, that's good. That's, that's an important part. Uh, I told him if you ever want to go somewhere else, I will I will pay all of your moving costs. And I pretty much gave him a piece of paper and I said, write your demands list here. If you're ever willing to come somewhere else with me, like just, you know, it's a done deal. But yeah, it, he's a I have an amazing manager. He's been here for nine years and he's probably better than what I deserve or what I've earned. Interesting. So, um well, shit, I'm trying to think of stuff to ask, maybe technical things. Have you looked at the uh, the new M1 MacBooks at all? What do you think of those? Uh, I've only seen like one or two. And it was a, I, I, I think they're really impressive. They're really fast. I mean, they're, they're very fast. They're very energy efficient. Like, I'm impressed with them from that perspective. I haven't, we don't really get a lot of new items to repair because laptops are like shoes, you know, like people treat it. It's like a new phone or new shoes. People treat it so perfectly when they first buy it. And then once it gets a scratch or a nick on it, then people start treating it like shit and spill something on it. So it usually takes like two years before somebody actually brings something here. The new M1s are actually pretty fucking crazy. I don't know if you've like watched any of the benchmarks or anything like that, but it's pretty nuts that a um, laptop that, uh, I, I guess first off you could say is an ARM laptop, can get the type of speeds they get out of the GPU. Like for instance, there's a game called Rust and that thing runs as good on a MacBook as it does on like a NVIDIA 3070. It's pretty... That's pretty crazy, honestly, I'm, if you ask me. I'm incredibly impressed at what Apple has done. And whatever I, I shit on them for the, for the anti-repair stuff, I will give them credit that what they did with the M1 is amazing. And I really wish other companies were out there innovating. Or, even if you just want to get an AMD Ryzen chip in a laptop, so many companies are still Intel only or only using the lower end chips. I'm really impressed with what Apple did there. Uh, I'm sorry to segue into something that's probably completely off topic uh, f from what you just proposed. Uh, I have a, you probably have more business experience than I do. What would you do if you were me? So when you said, what are you doing? Because to be oh. honest with you, I don't really have a clue what it is I'm doing. Like over the past year and a half, there's so many different directions I could go in. And I honestly have no clue uh, what it is I, even I'm, I'm actually doing at this point. So, so the problem is I don't know like a bunch about your business. It's all like based off of hypotheticals. Like how many, how many people work for you? Right now, 12. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to estimate, and you don't have to confirm any of this. I'm going to estimate that your business makes about $2 million or less a year. Um, so, uh, and then you have your expenses and everything else from that. Now, the interesting thing you have is YouTube. I know that sounds so cliche because every, you know, 14-year-old is coming out there saying, um, you know, hey, you know, I want to do YouTube and stuff. But you're in a position where you could actually... I would say you would do more impact on the world with that than you can running a electronics repair store. Um, so I would try to, I don't know, I try to grow that as much as I can. So every hour of time and energy that I think you spend on trying to improve your, um, you know, your repair business, I think would be an hour wasted that should have been said be spent trying to figure out how to improve uh, the YouTube content you have and growing that. Because the thing is, if that takes off more, I mean, you already are a pretty well-known person, but if it continues to take off and grow, um, I think that the amount of revenue that that's going to create will dwarf uh, eventually what your electronics repair business does. And then all the people that you care about that you don't want to put out on the street and the reason why you wouldn't sell, um, you could repurpose those people to have similar jobs working on your YouTube channel, I think. The main problem I've had with YouTube is, or versus my business, is with my business, I know what makes me successful. I know what makes me a failure. I know what I could do to improve my business. I know what we, you know, I, I, with YouTube, I have no idea. So one example, I was walking by, it was probably like six in the morning. I was half asleep and tired. And I saw this stupid little subway grate thing. And I just did a video saying, look at this dumbass subway grate. Like we, uh, like it, it was just a meme tier, low effort, low quality. And in my opinion, stupid video. And this video is now the most viewed video on my channel, bar none. 
And when I do videos about things that I'm actually excited about or interested in, they perform like shit. So I remember I did this like 25 minute deep dive into the homeless problem in New York City, how, you know, how the shelters misuse the money they get, the, in, you know, the, 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 you know, weird political relationships between people who own the shelters, the people who make half a million dollars a year to run them. And like, nobody cared. That video did horribly. But like, I just, I, I walk by with my cell phone and I say some stupid shit about a great. That's, I don't know what actually makes, what is successful in this platform. I don't know what people are coming here for. I don't know what makes it successful. And above all, I wouldn't, I, I, with my business, I know when I'm doing well at something, I would be proud to iterate on that. So, you know, if I figure out how to fix a motherboard that nobody else knows how to fix, I'm kind of proud to iterate on that. But I'm not really proud to go out and find more stupid shit in the hopes that I get something to go viral again. Uh, because, like, I, again, I, I wasn't even really proud of that video to begin with. It was literally just, I don't know, like a, a morning shit post. Uh, Sounds so like you I, need a hot tub. I could use a hot tub. <laughs> No, I, I just think you, you know, obviously you're, you're doing the YouTube stuff well and you're continuing to do it. I just want, is there any, let me ask you this. Is there any elements of YouTube that you think that you can't do um, right now that you just don't have enough time or, or anything along those lines? No, I th like the, the YouTube thing, I, I, I never felt like I didn't have enough time to do the stuff that I wanted to do. Like I always managed to make, I, I managed to make time in the day to do the videos on things that I want to do. Like I, I'm lucky that, you know, I'm not at a point where, well, I would want to do this YouTube video. Or there's this thing that I'd want to record, but I can't because I have to fix a MacBook. I mean, me fixing a MacBook at this point is pretty much just theater for the camera. Like 99% of all of that stuff is actually done by people who work here who have surpassed me in skill. So you actually, you're not actually going and um, doing any repairs yourself anymore at this point? I mean, I guess that makes sense. I, I, no, I just do it for the camera because when I have one of my employees do it, they're better at doing repairs than me, but nobody wants to see them because of the parasocial nature of YouTube. So mm -hmm. like if I have Paul or Anel fix a MacBook, the, the analytics on that video will show that I'll lose 800 subscribers or I'll lose 2,000 subscribers on a video when somebody else is fixing it. But then when I fix it, everybody's happy and excited and the video does well. So I fix MacBooks on screen from time to time just you know, to advertise the business and also because you know, there are some viewers in the channel that want to see it. But like, I don't I mean, I, I, you know, if I wanted to like, take a vacation to Florida for a month or something, I could do that and I would come back to a perfectly functioning business. I'd maybe have to have one or two conversations with the manager about like, here are little things that we should think about redoing or here's a system we should change. But like, I don't actually have to be here to do anything anymore. So um, like, let me give you an example of the type of content I think you'd be, you could be doing. And you might say that's below me or I don't want to do it or that's too clickbaity. And that's fine. But I'm just going to drop an example because I have seen a bunch of this. OK, so something I think that's kind of interesting and um, getting somewhat popular now on YouTube is stuff like I bought 15 uh, broken laptops. How many of them can I repair? And then I give them away. And these videos pull numbers. I'm sure you've I've seen, seen them as well, right? Yes. And I, I, I've seen, they, they do ten, like 80 times better than a traditional repair video does, even if they're not actually successful at it. I've, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. That so, well. so those are the types of things I think that you could be doing that are super interesting. And there's actually even older, like I could think of a million things you could do. You could be like, you could go and buy some like vintage Nintendo that doesn't work anymore and trying to figure it out. And it's all fun because the fucking transistor that you need to buy hasn't been made in 15 years and or shit like that. Like those are the type of videos I think would pull serious, um, serious numbers because it's interesting. Right. And it's almost like ASMR watching people going and, and um, taking these old things apart and dusting them off and trying to figure out, OK, why isn't this turning on and, and doing that? And it's just it's very it's very cool in its type of content. I think that you uh, would do better at because look at the people who are doing it now. I don't know what the fuck any of these people are. It's, you know, they're nothing. I don't even know if they're doing it themselves or if they have, you know, a Lewis Rossman guy behind the scenes that are actually telling them like, hey, that's, uh, you know, you need to go. That transistor is bad. The power is not going in or something. So, yeah, why why not do videos like that? Why not make time to do that? I think it's because my format has always just been like, I'm just making a video that shows whatever I'm doing with my normal life that day. I haven't actually put aside time to say, I'm going to do this theme or this format. And I don't have a good answer to that question. I don't have a good reason to not be doing that. You know, like, why don't I do, let's buy 15, you know, MacBooks from a, a scamming refurbisher and like, see what they're like to fix. Can I fix it? Versus just, I'm going to fix a MacBook today. Well, like, it isn't that, right. like, it's you, you do, like, user idea. challenges, too, like, right? Like, send me your most fucked up MacBooks and see, if, can Lewis fix it? Like, there's so many cool um, pieces of content, I think, that you could be doing 
as like, um, you know, like as a celebrity, whatever. And this is your niche. Like, um, uh, what's another, like, you know, the electro boom guy, like he makes it funny. Like there's a lot of stuff there. Like, I think it's like almost like taking a little bit of like, no, I, I only want to, I still want to talk about serious things. He's hysterical. Like, you know, yeah. 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 I, but it, I met that guy in person too. He's really humble and kind and a great dude. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That is a good idea. For something to go for. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I I mean listen, I'll I'll be a watcher when you go and create the you know, I bought the ten most scuffed laptops on eBay or I bought a nineteen eighty four Xerox laptop. Can I get it to work again? Like these are cool things you can do when you go into the history of it. It's like everyone's like, I don't I don't know, whatever. That's, a, that's not a bad idea. That's definitely, I mean, you gave me something to think about, and I appreciate it, that. You also, you just, I don't think you have to run the fucking repair shop anymore. You can like own it and keep the people working there. It's, you know, it's self-sustaining. You're not losing money, which is good. So let it do its thing and focus on the shit that you can have a direct impact on, right? Yeah. Like you, you probably don't... can't do too much for the fucking repair shop at this point. It's not like the, the revenues can be changed too much if you're there or not there, right? I'm not a good enough business owner to be able to grow this into something like well, some 1,000 employee company. So I think like this is as far as it's like I've done as much refining as I'm going to do. Yeah, that, that's my, fine. My skill I, set. I know how that is completely. So if that's the case, the smartest thing you can do, I think, is recognize that that's the case, right? Like, OK, <laughs> I've, I've taken this as far as I can go. I can either. It, you know what it's like? I use this kind of analogy a little bit. It's like buying headphones. OK, you can get a pretty fucking good pair of headphones for $200. But if you want to get one that's like 5% better than those $200 pair, you're going to end up like doubling the price. And if you want to get something 5% better than those, it's going to like double that again. It's like exponentially less returns as you hit this peak. And I think that's kind of where you're at with the business right now is it's like, it's running good. It doesn't need you. It's, it, you know, you can go and spend a fuck ton of time and maybe you can get 5% more. But um, yeah, I think like you, your influence would be way better spent on things that you can have direct impact on. Interesting. I think the the main pushback for me is always I, I I've never wanted to do something where it felt like it was a pre-scripted story or something that wasn't real. Because like people thought about that when I was doing that real estate series with moving. It's like I really like it wasn't a fake story. I just I really was that much that 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 uh, autistically pissed off and aggravated at the fact that they would lie about the size of the square footage and it started to become like a little game for me. And like I think that what what made what got people so excited about that content was. Like they were sharing my enthusiasm for it rather than me coming up with some random idea. And, uh, well, but well, hold on, I'm real talk. To it. But I want to try this. Stuff. Would you, okay, I'm, and you can be honest, like, would you have no interest whatsoever in buying 10 MacBook Pros that aren't boot, not, not booting, and then trying to figure it out? Would you get no enjoyment from that, like trying to figure it out and repair them and po possibly make money from it as well? Is that not interesting to you at all? I don't think I find fixing things as fun now as I did 10 years ago. So what um, do you find think, fun besides bitching about real estate? Because no one wants to pay to hear that. You'd be surprised. <laughs> I, I, I would be surprised. There's unless actually you're going, a video you're going, going up today. <laughs> uh, unless we're doing turning into like a tenant rights ad, advocate or something. I, I think uh, there's probably bigger markets. But yeah. Okay. So not as much enjoyment that you get out of actually using your skills anymore is what it sounds like? I think diminishing. Diminishing. It was like It was more fun, you know, like 10 years ago than it is now. Uh, okay. But yeah, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. I think it's good. It's definitely something I should think about doing. Like it's a mild change in format to do the same thing I'm doing now, but to have it get across to a wider audience and probably get a lot more people interested in fixing shit that way. Yeah. I mean, is that your goal, right? To get more people into like this type of, what did I say? Like a micro type of uh, mindset where they're going out there and getting like tradesman jobs versus like going and doing like pure intellectual programmer things, like actually fixing shit and learning stuff. Because if that's the case, if you want to have an impact on the world like that, uh, I think, you know, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, because I, I realize the legal method, uh, path to right to repair is a, is a shit show. I'm st I still pursue it, but like I, it, that, that's a shit show. The real th impact I want to have is getting more people to experience this as something that's fun, not, not as a chore, but like fixing things is actually fun and interesting and cool so that they want to do it, so that when they grow up and they start their own companies or they work for all these companies, they don't want to take part in the anti-repair stuff. So. 
that, that that's probably a better way to get them across to it because if those if videos with that format will be more appealing to people, it'll get more people involved and yeah, that, that that's that's a really good idea. I don't that was a, that was a blind spot for me and I appreciate you pointing it out. Thank you. Well, I would say the other thing is you probably have to get to a point I, you seem like a guy who has a lot of principles. Uh, am I right on that? I, so, I wouldn't want to compliment myself to that. Okay, well, principles are bad in business, okay? You shouldn't, you shouldn't have those, okay? So things that you can do, um, you should compromise on some of them. So for instance, like your YouTube video could be very plain and say, I bought 10 MacBooks and fixed them, and, and I fixed four, right? You could say that, or you could say like, you know, Lewis ultimate challenge, 10 MacBooks, how many will I fix? Will I lose money? Like you can do the clickbaity shit knowing that it's going to get more views or you can like stand to your principles and being like, I hate that shit. I hate when YouTube videos do that. Just tell me exactly what I need to know so I can like get it and get out and not waste any time on this. But then again, you have to go back to your goal. What is your goal to get people interested in fixing shit or being like some honest, good Samaritan? Um, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I understand. Is a lot of the your competitors, I guess I could say on that front of like, at least on that stuff, they do a lot of that clickbaity shit. Is it clickbait if it's accurate though? Like well, if you're saying what's actually happening, like. Well, you're asking a question usually. Are you okay doing that? Like, to that level? I bought ten MacBooks. Will I fix them? You know, and a picture of a sad Lewis up there crying with ten thousand dollars, like, you know, falling down a drain. Like, are you willing to go to the lengths that need to happen, Lewis? I guess I don't have principles. I would have been willing to do that right now. Okay. Well, hey. Probably not all with right. picture of me crying, but. Well, the, listen. That's well, what maybe you I have a different do. principle. All right. Good. Good. Yeah, listen, I think it'll be enjoyable. I look forward to um, to watching these these videos. I love that shit. Have you ever seen any of the um, the ones where they kind of do restorations? Not, not electronic-based, but like, hey, here's a watch that's been in the mud for like 80 years, and they take the whole thing apart and um, do that. I love that type of shit. I watched a couple with like not not watches, but you know, like here's a television from the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Or here's a here's an IBM from the 80s. People really like that type of stuff, like you know, like fixing really really obscure random crap. I don't know how I could commoditize that though, because I don't. Like, it takes a lot of time to learn all the intricacies of one of those random pieces of hardware. Oh, so you're saying, for instance, like let's say I gave you. <sighs> I'm trying to think of exactly. Let's say I gave you an 8088 or like a 286 computer, like just an IBM computer, and the thing doesn't boot. Do you think that you're going to be able to um, easily figure out why it's not booting and get it booting? Or are you going to have to be like, okay, I have no idea what any of these fucking chips are. What one handles power delivery on here? If you're the same Dan that sent us an iPad that took over three months to fix because we didn't have a schematic, I think you the answer to that one. Oh, boy. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was a... Uh... Like I remember, you, the, the, I, we I didn't realize that on that year. I think it was the each connector had a little bit of information for touch and a little bit of information for image. So even if uh, you needed both of them to work, and I was trying to guess which inductor was for what, and I didn't recognize it. But like it, it's something that can work, and it's totally doable. I wound up figuring it out, and like you know, uh, having an interesting discussion with the supposed iPad board repair expert here afterwards. But like it was, uh, but it's one of those things where I don't know how to commoditize that into a the easy YouTube format because it could easily take me three months to figure out one problem. Well, I guess you have to kind of stick to the shit you know then. So if you think that, like, again, using the 486 example, so you know what a 486 is, right? You're old. Yeah, like me. Like, okay. yeah could I figure it out? Yes. It's just even if that video brought in $2,000, I might have spent, you know, like 8000 or $20,000 well, worth of time. To be to clear, we're trying to get fucking well far and beyond from making $2,000 from a YouTube video. You get that, right? Like the idea here is to break out of, um, you know, those numbers. So like instead of doing, you know, 30K views, you're trying to do like, you know, over a million or something. You need to have yeah. like ultra clickbaity bullshit. Uh, that's the idea on that front. I suppose. Yeah, I think that that when you analyze that, then the real answer to my, I think the real answer I'd be giving is that I, I have a fear of the risk reward not being worth it because I fear failure, which keeps me doing the format I am. Because for that format to work, like I know how much time it's going to take me to try and figure out some random 30 year old computer issue. If I even am able to do it and turn it into something interesting, it would probably have to make like 10, at least 10 or 20 K or so to make it worth it. Cause I, I know it's not going to be something where I go, you know, hey, everybody, how's it going? And then, like, in 15 minutes, I've figured it out because I have the schematic built into my brain by now. Yeah, interesting. I mean, 
yeah, I guess. I mean, people like Xboxes and shit like that, and you inspire people to like try and buy them up on eBay. There's a whole business of people doing that type of shit. Really? Yeah. Or, or are you just chiming in as if you're here now? I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, that was interesting. <sighs> well, okay. Well, we look forward to seeing those uh, those videos, Lewis. And anything else you come up with? Well, I appreciate you taking the time to give me advice and uh, and make me aware of my blind spots. Thank you very much. Hey, to be clear, the fuck do I know? Literally nothing on any of this. So like, don't be going to be like, like okay. I imagine Lewis going into work tomorrow. Like, all right, kids, you're on your fucking own. Papa Lewis is going out there. I got a new plan in life. All right, like this. Slow down. All right, this is one fucking idiot on the internet giving you some suggestions right now. Okay, so it's worthwhile take... to have additional perspective. I appreciate. Okay, that. sure. I don't always listen to them, but I don't always still go ahead with them. But I like having them to, you know, marinate in my brain. Oh, one other thought: How much like other stuff do you do outside of YouTube? I guess. For money or for myself? Like, what do you mean? Like a well, like for instance, I am assuming, you know, do you stream on Twitch or do any of this other stuff or what? I stream on Twitch, but I'm not an affiliate because I think you're not allowed to dual stream to Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Are you partnered on Twitch? Did you no, just he's, say not you even, he's not even an affiliate. Wait, why? I don't think I'm any of those. Oh yeah, you can dual stream if you want. Oh yeah, I, I remember getting asking them about this, and there was whatever it was I was asking them for. They said you're not allowed to dual stream to YouTube, and I said, well, how much money will I make for streaming to Twitch? And they said, well, you'll you'll see once you sign the agreement. And I just thought there's no way in. It's kind of like a you know we'll. You're getting twenty dollars an hour. Would you like this job? How much does it pay? We'll let you know when you quit your current job, kind of thing. So I want. I, I so I use Twitch, but I don't. I, I haven't really built up my page or anything. Oh, also, you should consider starting a new channel. Um, is is I think the thought there, and like, do the clickbaity shit there and start from scratch, and that way you don't feel like you're kind of diluting your existing brand, right? Of Rossman Repair Group, like that kind of stays where it at, and then you go and you start building something under your brand. Lewis that's, that's the other thing you know I've had people tell me you should have a different channel for other stuff but I don't know what it should I don't actually know what the primary content people show up here for is it like to see me fix a board to talk about right to repair to curse out Apple to curse it was out all Apple, it's your personality real estate, no, like no, what are they there for I have no idea they're there for you it's your personality yeah for you like literally it's not one subject so you should do shit that you would you would enjoy but like don't be like Steven where you do shit that kills your content like playing league like actually, you know, try to do try to do shit that you think most people would genuinely enjoy watching. Interesting. Okay, that makes sense. So if you're gonna stream, like you could imagine you streaming, creating a YouTube video like that. You know, seems stupid, but like, hey, hey guys, I just ordered fucking ten MacBooks. I gotta unpack them and see what the fuck's going on for my new video. Like that would be cool content to watch uh, you stream. And then people kind of feel like they're there with you and you get revenue there. So yeah, I would go that direction. And then also sign up to be like a, a Twitch affiliate because I think you can duo stream um, and you get, you know, you get paid to do it there, right? I, I will sign up to be a Twitch affiliate. This is something to consider. The other, th I think this is probably me just coming up with excuses at this point. But my other main fear is if I were to look at YouTube as a primary method of making a living, that it winds up becoming easier to lean. Uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase this that's proper. I know I'm going to phrase it improperly and regret it later, but um, I'm going to head over this. Every time I've made a video, it's pretty much been exactly what's in my head, and I kind of say what I'm thinking without regards to, will this get me a bigger fan base? Will it make more money if I phrase it this way? Like I've never had that in my head. And I know I've put off certain people because of, like, you know, I'll go this far in an issue, but not all the way with it. I don't, I don't want to become Tim Pool. Does that make sense? I think there's a pretty big stretch of highway between you becoming Tim Pool and you just maybe not being a child that can know like, okay, I should put more. I can't be a free spirit hippie that's going to give no thought whatsoever to my business. I have people that I'm responsible for. I want to try and grow my brand. I, you know, I have goals and you know what? It's worth making somewhat of a sacrifice that I am going to think about this fucking thumbnail. I'm not going to just go say, I fixed four MacBooks, six I did not fix. And instead, you're going to be like, I got a MacBook. Guess if I fixed it. You're going to sacrifice. Because that's there's what you have to do. Because like, there's a... What the fuck is happening? Wait, what's going on? <sighs> he had to re-log?
I, I kind of worry and I also fear that if I were to make that my primary method of income, that there would be that there would be a temptation to do that where there isn't one now. Hmm. That's that's probably me being a little ridiculous with it or going overboard to make excuses to not try something new. I think that you have it in you. I believe in you, Lewis. Well, that's a good that's a good note to end the conversation on. Thank you. I look forward to seeing what amazing things you come up with. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, Dan, Destiny. Feel free to come in anytime. You, you, right. you have roles, so you can just join if you're ever feeling bored. I'm sure Stephen right. would always like the company. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Have fun. Be careful. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Cheers. All right.